Ja. Ja, ah, hej, det är Budlabspojken. Du, idag tänkte jag att vi skulle titta på hur man startar Vim ifrån Vivaldi. In English. All right, so we got this extension now, VB4C, which is Vim bindings for Chrome, uh, which also works in Vivaldi, of course. So if we type colon and help, we will get the help page for this VB4C extension. And here you can, for example, see all the, the key bindings that are enabled by default and some commands that aren't enabled by default. And the last uh, entry in this key bindings list, uh, which is quite long, is this, an unmapped command called edit with vim. Um, and just as it sounds like, this is a command that lets you edit text in Vim, the real Vim editor, you know. Um, to do that, uh, we can read here in the info uh, that uh, this will edit with Vim in a terminal. It's kind of a lie, but whatever. Uh, need the cvim server py script running for this uh, to work and the Vim command set inside that script. So this Vim server py is a Python script. And if we follow that link, you can see it will take us here to a file uh, on github um, and this file currently this links to uh, chromium vim here which is the original extension which uh, vb4c is a fork of uh, and here we can see this cvim server py uh, but that file also exists in the vb4c repository uh, under the same name actually, they haven't really rebranded this, this yet since the extension is so new and stuff, but um, this script here needs to be running for the edit with vim command to work. Uh, and since we have already cloned this repository because we are using it, you know, uh, to load this extension as a uh, unpacked extension, since it's not available in the uh, Chrome web store yet, we actually have this uh, script and stuff here in the repo here it is cvim server py uh, and before we do anything else here i like to copy this uh, file um, uh, so we don't uh, make this uh, repository dirty here uh, we, we can copy this uh, cvim server into the vb4c directory here so cp uh, cvim server uh, as uh, vb4c server dot py there now we got it here we don't need to touch this original uh, repository not really sure but whatever the comment here uh, at the top of the script is actually kind of useful. It's almost more useful than the help page we just looked at. Uh, because here we can see that uh, uh, we first uh, should add a key mapping to this command. And here is an example mapping. Let's copy that and add it to our vb4c config here. And the mapping looks like this. It's a bit different from other mappings you might see because it's an IMAP, meaning it will only work in insert mode. And uh, this example one has control O. -O. I, I just like to have it as control E, but it doesn't really matter. And then that will execute this edit with Vim command. Um, okay. And what this means is uh, or that wasn't what i was supposed to do i wanted to open the settings here for vb4c because i know it have some good input boxes here because edit mode it, it just means that uh, we are in um and here we can see the key binding here it it already is present now in this uh, uh, setting so so it's perfectly synced with our local file there so you go into insert mode uh, just when you are in an input box, box like this. So this is insert mode, you know, just like in Vim when you are inserting text. Uh, 
And that means we can now execute this control E key here, but it will not do anything if we do so. Nothing happens because uh, this CVIM server script isn't running. So we need to start that script here now. Uh, this guy BB4C. No. Server. Why doesn't it? Ah, VC4. Uh, we can't have that, you know. We're, let's rename it. VC to VB4C server.py. There. Now let's execute the script. VB4C server.py. There. Now it's running here. Um, now if I press Control E uh, in an edit box here. Something happened, uh, at least, but uh, we didn't get any Vim, right? And that is because by default in this VB4 uh, server script here, uh, the Vim command, which is set here, is what uh, will get executed. Uh, and here the Vim command is gvim-f, and gvim is the GTK version of Vim. So let's install that, just to show you here. Uh, it doesn't really matter. We can. I will show you how to do it with normal uh, terminal Vim as well here. Um, but gvim. This is, uh, I guess, the biggest drawback with gvim is that it conflicts with uh, normal Vim. So you cannot have both of them installed at the same time in a sane way here. At least uh, not having them both uh, managed by Pacman. So here it asks me now if I want to remove original Vim. You don't have to follow these steps, I just want to show you here quickly. There, now we have installed gvim. Then we can execute the server again here. And now, if I press Ctrl E in an edit box, it will open um, gvim here. We can type stuff here. Type stuff, and then save and quit. You can see it uh, enters this uh, text immediately into the edit box, and if we are, um, if the input box already have a bunch of text like here, and we press Control E, you can see it opens the whole input box here as a temporary file, and uh, you can add comments or whatever, and use all, all the Vim good stuff, you know. Then just save and close, and there it uh, immediately adds that to the input box. So, th so this is a very useful feature uh, or function. If you want to, yeah, you, you get it, and enter text into internet. Um, but of course, I guess most people don't use this gvim. So if you wanted to use uh, normal vim, uh, it's a bit different, you know, because we cannot just execute Vim here. We also have to uh, tell it to, to start Vim in a terminal emulator uh, window. And I am using URXVT. So the, like the simplest way to do this is do URXVT E and then Vim. That will open a new window, a new URXVT window with Vim open because E here lets us enter a command. Um, it, it would also work if you if you have URXVT uh, set up with the URXVT D, which you should if you are using URXVT, and you could use URXVT C E Vim here, and that will also work. Um, but just to keep it simple here, and of course it is probably a bit different depending on what terminal emulator you are using. But if we do the simplest way here, URXVT E Vim. Now I press Control E uh, here. Ah, we have to start the server also. There. Now it open terminal Vim here. Cool. You can enter text here instead. Uh, hello, comment. And it works. So this is how you set that up so you can uh, use this Vim thing. 
Uh, and of course you could use other editors as well and then you have to change your command here. Uh, I personally use Sublime but I guess it would work with other uh, editors also. But we will not get into that, we will leave it here at Vim and you can experiment with this yourself if you want to try another uh, um, editor. Instead now we, we have to focus because if we want to use this feature, which we kind of always uh, want to make sure it is, we don't want to start this uh, server process every time we want to enter text, that kind of makes no sense. So what does make sense is to every time we start Vivaldi, or maybe even every time we focus Vivaldi, we can uh, test to see if the server is running or not. not. If it isn't, then we start it. And also, I guess, it's a server, you know. This is actually a local web server uh, we are running uh, on our machine here that is uh, created here in Python uh, at the local host and then port which is uh, set in the, with this variable here, the port number. And you can also change this port number uh, and change the setting uh, in um, VB4C. Vim port, so you can do let Vim port and then change it from the default 8001 here if you would like to do that. Um, and this is kind of a hack, uh, this whole uh, VB4C server. There is actually a, a more official and correct way to do this with extensions. That's called uh, native messaging, uh, but it isn't... A, at the moment, uh, it isn't available here for VB4C. They haven't added that. Uh, and it is kind of a tricky thing to, to set up. But I have actually uh, planned to look into how to enable uh, native messaging instead. And then you don't have to rely on external scripts and setting up a server and stuff. Because, yeah, you get it. There, there may or may not be security uh, uh, issues using this method. But, whatever, this is how it is right now, uh, and if we want to make sure that the server is running, I think we should create a, a new script here, we can call start vivaldi.bash, I know we don't need to enter the extension, but I do that anyways, uh, because, there, now I created a script here, um, I guess uh, we will also need this uh, lines here so we can locate the script in case we put it in our path, which I think we will. Um, Alright, uh, what this script will do is uh, launch Vivaldi, which we are doing in our i3 config right now. So we got it here, the command. So we add that command here. We will continue to build, we will add more features to this script uh, later, but right now let's uh, focus on this uh, testing for the uh, server. And the way we can do this is if I start the server here and then um, we can open a new terminal here. And the way I have done this is uh, using pgrep uh, f and um, then the name of the script here vb4c underscore server dot py and that finds the pid here but it is uh, actually very slow this method and i yeah I'm, I'm curious if anyone have a better solution that is faster than this i'm interested the problem is you know um, i think we can do this if we do f l f maybe yeah hmm. yeah then it prints the full Maybe a dollar here. Ah, same. Does this work? No, oh, then it didn't find anything. Whatever. Um, yeah, it is kind of slow, this P grip thing here. 200 milliseconds. But we can uh, do it after we have activated Vivaldi with this uh, i3 run thing here. And then we can run this uh, because we start the server in the background. So it doesn't really matter if this takes uh, some time. And my thought here is that we can do this test for the server every time we, we run this uh, uh, start Vivaldi, which we will use now to toggle Vivaldi. Right now we're using this command, but now we will use start Vivaldi instead. So we do it all, or that's how I want to use it. 
to focus Vivaldi in, also focus Vivaldi, you know. I don't know if you get what I mean here, but we do this. Copy this P grip. And we can do dev null with that so we don't get the so it doesn't print the PID. Um, or uh, start the server and this is why I wanted to keep the, the directory we have here because then we know where the server is located it's located in the um, I guess we can do this deed slash vb4c slash vb4c underscore server dot py we can execute that in the background and this will all only be ex uh, done when uh, the PID doesn't exist. So we also have to make our script here executable. So schmod plus x start Vivaldi and then we can test this start we could also add like, just a test here echo starting server and then we ex try to execute the script and there it uh, focused the window it took here 300 milliseconds but this uh, just imagine here 200 of these milliseconds are just testing for the server there and it didn't it did never uh, start the server but it focuses Vivaldi, that is much faster than 300 milliseconds here. Um, you can see, if, if you look at the title bar here, uh, you can see that it, uh, it gets focused uh, before the prompt updates here. So it doesn't really matter that it searches for, for the server there, but I wish uh, this was uh, faster anyways. Um, and uh, it doesn't start the server because it's running here, uh, but now also started the server and since it did that in the background we also got control over the prompt but uh, worth noting here is that every time we, we do something with the server like control E here you can see it prints some uh, stuff to standard error in the terminal we started it from so I guess we could also uh, redirect the uh, standard error to dev null from, from this guy if we wanted to, but it can be useful to, to see the output of this maybe. Um, and of course we will not start it from uh, the terminal here. Uh, instead I will do this, I will zoom link uh, this script start Vivaldi dot bash uh, into uh, the bin directory in my home directory, which is I have created this directory myself So it may or may not exist on your system But the important thing is that this directory is in my path so um, I add here start Vivaldi There and now we should be able to, to execute this uh, Script uh, no matter where we are, you know start Vivaldi and it works. And that also means we can easily add it to our i3 config instead of having this stupid command now. We can just have start Vivaldi reload i3 and press super F and now also control E should work and stuff here and it does. Perfect. So yeah I think we end the video there. Uh, this is a great feature uh, that I highly recommend you using or no, I don't. I don't highly recommend you use it because I am a bit uh, unsure how safe it really is with running this local web server and letting your extensions execute commands and stuff. But uh, th there are some security built into this. It, it uh, uh, tries to make sure that it at least is uh, a mess uh, an extension that contacts uh, here you see they test at least it it's a chrome extension who makes the request to the server here um, but it only tests for chrome extension so any chrome extension could uh, talk to this uh, server 
I believe. And that's, an, uh, that's uh, another thing that's different with this native messaging. Uh, because uh, then only a certain extension can communicate with, with a certain command. And of course, uh, here we can only execute this command, but I don't know, maybe whatever. It, fe it feels a bit, uh, um, yeah, you get what I mean. And with that said, <laughs> in the next video, I will show you how to execute all kinds of commands with this server so we can do <laughs> some really fun things. But yeah, if you're going to hack someone, hack yourself, you know. <laughs> Have a great day, everybody. Ciao.